Welcome back to the Isaac Jargon Podcast. Today, I talked to Brian Polari. Brian is the owner of Polari Productions, a media production agency down in Arkansas. They've worked in over 14 states, 58 cities, and over 1,100 projects. Brian started doing paid work when he was 14, and now he's 20, and his business has just escalated here in the last two years. We met last summer and quickly found we got a lot in common. Both run into business, both grew up in Iowa. He moved out when he was 13, but still. Both young, both ambitious, both looking to scale. He's been good to talk to. I don't talk to him enough. He's got a lot of valuable things to say. Before we get started, I just wanted to plug my weekly newsletter. I post it every Monday at 7 a.m. Central Time and talk about what I've done in the week, what insights I have, what's inspired me, what I've uploaded for the week, and other things. Try to make a little community over on email if you're interested. Go to IsaacJarnigan.com slash newsletter to sign up, and I'd be happy to send you an email every week. Let's get into the podcast. Yo, Ryan, how we doing, bro? Good, good, man. Good to see you again. Good to finally talk after. Yes, sir. It's been a few weeks, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, what you been up to? Uh, today, has been a, it's been a busy day. We've been setting up. So we've been posting a lot of content yeah. on, on our page recently. I'm sure you've seen that. And yeah. a lot of that was due to our conversation per Right, but I was like, we need a way to like streamline this. So I've been we've been working on like a setup all day right. long. So we've been we got the vertical mount here, the vertical camera. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, I was just messing with it before we hopped on, but I got the we got kind of this is gonna be the stationary setup going right. forward for the next. Yeah, the, for the videos going forward. I read on your first your first reel, you're posting a uh, hundred or a hundred yeah. days in a row. First of all, so yeah. and you've never done anything consistent like that with content promotion wise or have you no nothing like nothing that's that consistent and like directed to an audience that's a little bit more specific you know we've posted you know maybe a couple days in a row where our normal posting schedule is like three days a week but nothing that's like you know monday you know monday tuesday wednesday all the way seven days a week every single day right and you you got a you got a guy helping you out with that right we got a, so we have a, a social media manager cool. for our page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She manages a few of the other pages uh, that we now have under contract. Thank God. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're like, I ain't about that anymore. <laughs> it's just too much. It's too much to like, it's too much to, uh, it's too much to, to have to like do the day to day stuff. And then also remind, remember to, to do your own personal stuff as well. Mm-hmm. So it just made more sense to to have her her name's Kat. I won't I won't keep referring to her as some random person, but yeah. It's definitely been game changer having her having her help us out. Yeah. Is she a local or is it all online, as I'm sure it could be? No, she it's funny because I met her through a I met her through an agent. So I used to work for a lady. I still do work for her, named Amanda Ganey, and uh she's like, I have this great lady. She she does real estate, you know, she just graduated from the U of A. Uh, you know, she's been doing the social media thing. You guys need to connect and like work together. And she was, t- she told me that for like two years straight. And then I finally like texted her and said, Hey, we need to meet up. I have some stuff I want to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This, especially with realtors. I feel like the younger ones, like they're, they're little mini social media influencers, you know? So you've got to have that skill. Um, yeah. my, my, my realtor clients a little, little on the older side and she has a, few people pulled up that are like we need one person to spend about 40 hours a week managing our four pages because we don't know how to do it it's a very important thing yeah yeah and it's it's funny that i actually got an email so one of our clients emailed us which was the brokerage itself that the agents work for yeah and they're like we just implemented this software that like will post across all of our agents platforms simultaneously and i was like what is this i was i was like I was, I was like, there's no way, there's no way that this, yes, I don't know. But that's, that's what the email said. Um, really? Guess, Have yeah. you looked into it? No, I, I mean, this was literally an hour and a half ago that I got this message. And a local person developed that or no? Not, not, not developed. It's just the software that they've implemented. Okay. Into, into their just day-to-day stuff. Yeah. So the one I've worked with that's close is called Metricool and they brand themselves at metricool.com. They brand themselves as the multi-tool for social media management. And yeah. as the one that it's it's closest to being the best, it's still not quite there. It is so hard to take all of the social media mediums, put them all in one spot and make sure it's optimized for each platform. Yeah. Yeah. That's been the, that's been the hardest thing is because 
you know, we started, we were, for one of our clients, we're using Meta, the Meta Business Suite. Yeah. Because that works super good for, you know, Instagram and Facebook, obviously, because yes. they're connected. Yeah. And that was, that was really good just for, you know, scheduling stuff out, especially since we only post on those two platforms, then we just upload their long form content to YouTube, which, right. you know, we maybe get two or three long form videos a month just from actual shoots. So yeah, yeah, it doesn't make sense to really to put out a calendar for that since it's not anything that's with a different yeah. consistency. Meta Business Suite's super nice. The only downside is obviously it's just meta products, you know, so it's like, yeah. shoot, if something else comes up, like we're screwed there. But back to your uh, 100 day plan. So you said our conversation helped go through that, but how did you like implement, like what, what, what made you go to that route? No, it was so I have a buddy that um we we've been friends now for almost a year and a half. We met at the at the Fort Lauderdale Bow Show last year. Right. So we're going on like over a year now of knowing each other and we're on a on a Discord call talking about, you know, just the Instagram algorithm and like social media strategies as a whole. Yeah. Cuz like I know that me and you have talked about it a little bit, you know. Just kind of jotted I tossed ideas out and around and talked about the struggles and then, you know, me and him were like I guess it really came up because one of his clients has millions of followers and they sell these dog products, right? Yeah. And I was like, okay, what is this guy doing differently that, you know, we're not implementing? You know, what is like, what is the difference between, you know, this person's page and, you know, my page? So we looked at, we looked at my page specifically and we came to the conclusion that, you know, the content is good overall, you know, the consistency is there, but it's like, what is the audience that we're trying to hit right here? So it was, it was, it was the, the conversation of like, all right, you know, we can offer these marketing services to, to different clients if we can, you know, build our own platform just by itself. I mean, that's, if that's not enough proof right there that you can't grow a, a platform, then I mean, what else is? Exactly. So, so it was, you know, we're going to make this a hundred days of videos to kind of help see if the algorithm will pick up on like the consistency and, you know, the audience that's like. You know, people making their own social content, which is the the audience, really. And that was kind of like the plan to see if we could grow the page or like get more engagement just off of posting those types of videos that aren't directly related to like our services yeah. or not directly related to like marketing our our services to other people, just kind of like giving out information. Right. What's a safety net for your type of content is obviously it's talking about, you know, mostly what you guys use for gear wise or like I saw an ad spec earlier or maybe that was actually paid. Who knows? It was a spec yeah. for Corona, right? So, uh, yeah, it's funny because I made that years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, just throwing it out. Was that pinned? Yeah. Did I mess it up? No, it was pinned, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was about to say. Yeah, okay. So, you've been <laughs> making those video pages. Um, what's good is it's such a specific niche that if it doesn't get views, it's still going to show those small groups of views of your followers that are following you, and it's a lead gen too. What's good about me and you is... These posts, we have platforms in order to turn these these clients into, you know, clients of ours rather than just being like, hey, can you help us do that? And we're just kind of like, no, we don't have anything to give you, but we do. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah. But yeah. I uh, I think that brain fart. Um, I think that the the biggest thing that we noticed just by posting that stuff or just posting those types of videos specifically is the watch time increased by like 20% compared to like other videos. Right. And I was like, holy crap. Like, yeah. Like we're going from like 19% watch time to like 38, 39, 40, 41% watch time, like yeah. halfway through the video. Yeah. Which was, you know, that's, that's still a lot of people. I mean, you yeah. can't expect to, you know, hold a hundred percent throughout an entire video, but right. just, just increasing that by 20% alone was, was, was incredible. And just like engagement as a whole has gone up. So you're comparing like a video of you doing a listing versus you talking through, you know, lighting. You're talking that's the that's the difference. Yeah. Yeah, and it was like, I mean, what is what are the difference between those two videos? I mean, you know, in the in the video of me directly addressing the camera, the the difference is, you know, we are specifically talking about a topic, you know, you see a real estate listing and you're like, "Oh, that's a nice house. That's a cool house," you know. Yeah. Great, move on, right? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, if someone is directly addressing you and it's like fits into something that you're interested in, it's like, okay, you know, grab their attention in the first second, half second of the video. This is something that I care to listen to. 
and they'll continue they'll continue watching through it yeah and i think one of the another big thing was like you know having a little bit more personality behind it Mm -hmm. coming off as a goofball but still getting a lot like still giving out good information yeah (laughs) no you're good at the you're good at talking like that i don't know is that is that an act or is that genuine just kind of how you act day to day (laughs) dude i definitely like amp it up a little bit right well you got to but you you said it's some silly things you're good at it you know you're not one of those like anti-social guys behind the camera for sure like you know how to talk yeah i can't that's the thing that's one of the biggest things i can't stand about like about content is just like I, I hate when people try to be something they're not in their content. Yeah. And I, I love, you know, if I might I might be being an amplified version of my normal self, but I mean I'm still being my normal self. It's just No, it is your it's just an ampli it it's time. like an amplified satire. It's an all around good good mood to be in for sure. Yeah. But damn. Well I mean, what have you been up to? I know that we last time we talked you were we were in the midst of launching the website. I've seen you posting some more stuff. Yeah, no kidding. So uh, I was sitting on content forever, man. Um, I'm just like, I want to get this website out. I want to make a huge lead gen. Make that isaacjarnigan.com slash links. Put it in every single one of my bios. And then start posting content and slowly and slowly developing things. So what that has meant is putting out a weekly newsletter every Monday. Um, I've been structuring that out. Um, what I've been up to, that's a heading. And I talk about, you know, clients I've worked with the last week or, you know, what I've been learning or whatever. Then I do insights. So if I feel like I can be freaking, I don't know, David Goggins or whatever, I'll, I'll write out whatever. I don't like doing that because I usually don't have insights. A lot of the times you're just eating up crap, but it's tricky because like, especially, you know, being in a, you know, being young, yeah, it's hard to like come out yeah. and, and like try to give out information about it is, you know, any specific like topic. Cause it's like, you know, that there's people out there with a decade experience on. You, yeah. We're screwed you know. there. We're screwed in that department for sure. Yeah. It's like, it's like, how do you, but my buddy Peyton was talking to me about, he saw that uh, a guy named Parker Wallbecker just sold his company full-time filmmaker, Yeah, which I'm sure you have heard of. Yeah. Uh, and they were talking about on this podcast about how like, you know, your level might be like a 50%. But there's always going to be people that are like a 10% that can digest the stuff that you know, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's always going to be p- people at like 75, 80, 90. Yeah. And, you know, you're still learning from them. But it's like as you gain that, that knowledge, yeah. you can just, you know, you can, no matter where you're at, you can always teach somebody. Something. Right. Right. The topic. The 10 percenters need to learn from the 30 percenters. They might not be able to understand the 90 percenters, you know? I mean, Parker Wall, I don't know his last name, Wallbeck. He's yeah. definitely. He's way up there. I have a hard time listening to him sometimes because he knows his craft really, really well. But it's yeah. just kind of you know. so. I'll give insights if I feel like I have anything. So, but that's that's if I have some. So last week it was like you know be careful who you're saying no to. I just had a cool opportunity come up, and it's because I randomly texted them and we had a good relationship. So and I was there for them. So that's what I threw in last week. That's kind of an example, but that's been fun. Awesome. Weekly pods. I said I'd put you on right when I started that. And then, uh, like weekly YouTube videos or whatever. So it's been pretty dang busy, but we're, me and you both were, we're into that short form content every once in a while. Um, how are you structuring yours out? Are you sitting down recording five or 10 or are you like recording one each day and then turning around and editing it? So the last like three days. So the, the best thing about like this whole challenge is, you know, we've had content stored away for a year and a half now, like just other stuff, just stuff that's like, you know, behind the scenes of log style content that isn't anything, yeah, uh, you know, super crazy, but it's just, you know, it's entertaining, there's good information in it. But the first nine or 10 videos um, we shot in the span of like two days. Right. So we had, you know, we had, we had eight, seven, eight days to, to go off of there. But I was, I was on a trip in Texas and I ended up staying for an extra week. Right. And uh we ran into the issue. That's when the, the scene changed up of me being in a different setting and I had to record and turn around and then Yeah. Uh you know, I recorded like three in one day. But yeah. the goal for the studio basically here is to have a spot that I can sit down, you know, once a week or, you know, every 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 two weeks and record, you know, a host of content. I don't want the content to be so specific that it's like every time we post, it's going to be an educational no. video. But 
you know, I want to throw in stuff that's interesting. So, you know, if we can do like, like four or five of these a week or three or four of these a week and then mix that in with like behind the scenes stuff or, yeah. you know, out in the field, just stuff yeah. that's like us, like personally, like showing off who we are as people and not just like our work, because, you know, if they want to see our work, if they're genuinely interested, you know, they're going to make the effort to reach out or like go through your page. But, you know, they're going to see our person. We The biggest thing was like showing off our personalities and yeah. like, how we interact with people and just like do our day to day. Right. Right. One of, one of your all time favorites or my all time favorites of yours is you spraying the the lens and, and wiping it and saying, oh, I did doing this a hundred times for each shoot. I mean, just like having a personality like that in this sort of world, much needed, much needed. Yeah. Uh, I always get told like, dude, you're one of the chillest people around. It's just like, you know, being a, being your genuine persona goes a long ways for sure. Yeah, no, And you'll, I mean, I can, you know, you can think of, people can think of so many stories of just like, I mean, I can personally think of stories of just, you know, going down the path of like, you know, like interacting with people and just giving them too much trust off the start. And it's like, man, I should have not gone into business with that specific person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if I would have known better, if I would have listened to my peers, uh, then I we wouldn't have been in that situation. Yeah. Um, I think yeah. that I'm trying to drop back. I forgot what the question was. Oh, I don't even freaking remember. Um, no. two, no. Weeks, two weeks ago we talked. Yeah. And you talked really about- Two weeks? No, it's been more than that. I can't even lie. It's probably been a month. We'll say a month. Dang it. Um, it's because I knew I was going to do a pod with you soon, so I'm like, I don't want to exhaust this out, bro. We needed to talk. It's all right. We'll, do, we'll get back to it. Um, you talked about your, your rich friend's dad or something like that. Maybe like one of your mentors. He asked you, hey, are you really going to do this for the rest of your life to make that comfortable amount of money and exhaust yourself out? Like, what are you going to do to change that? What are your thoughts, Ben, since we talked about it last so I'm pretty sure you're referring to my one of my mentors, John Isaacs. And, yeah. And uh, his yeah his question to me was how you know is this like you know what what is like the five year, ten year, fifteen year plan? Because you know all all these mentors that I talk to, you know, they'll critique me in real time, but they'll also you know they're putting just the thought in my mind of like you know prep for the future. You know what is the game plan? You know if you want to work, you know if you want to do this, like what are we doing? Like what are we doing to grow? every year yeah. the next five years to the point where it's sustainable. And I think that what, what really like stuck with me was, you know, is this, you know, it started off as, as a big passion for me and it still is a passion, but right. over the course of like the last two and a half years, it's really just like, it's, it's become so real. And so, uh, it's become so it's, it's like a real company now. It's like, okay, you know, yeah, I got to send out payroll, like, every yeah. two weeks and it's 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 a whole different it's a whole different thing that i've never thought i would experience at, at yeah. 20 and i think that you know long term i i really like the field that we're in i think that eventually branching out into a different sector is the goal and whether that be like big budget investment or like you know just you know growing the company to a point where we can sell it or you know, keeping the company and then just investing into different, you know, startups. And right. I don't know. It's it's such a it's such a tricky thing because I don't want to. Neg- I I feel like the reason that we've been successful to this point is because we were able to like take something we were all good at and enjoyed, and you know, make a living out of it. Whether or not, you know, it's not like we're shooting music videos and and the most entertaining stuff every single day of the week. But it's like, would I rather be? using a camera to film a house or would I rather be picking up trash or working at a fast food restaurant? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And I, I, know. I think we both related and we just like seeing people getting what they want and mm-hmm. what they provided for. And so like it makes recording a house a little more impactful than it sounds a little bit, but yeah, a year ago we wouldn't have talked yet. You wouldn't have been doing any retainers, right? You didn't have any contract work. No, no. The most we had was, um, sorry, hold on. You're chilling too. Yeah. One of our, one of the, uh, one of the, the, the neighbor kids next door, he, uh, he bought my buddy's camera and he's yeah. picking it up right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Background. <laughs> he, was, he was helping us make some vlog style BTS content. Yeah. Today. Yeah. Building the studio and stuff. But, um, 
No, to, to bring it back. Yeah, no, we wouldn't have even talked to him. I mean, we must have first interacted, you know, seven months ago. Right? Yep, uh, middle of summer. Uh, uh, Jeff Jeff said, go check out Ryan Polari. I'm like, who the hell's Ryan Polari? But found out your name was Brian. I'm like, yep, this kid's chill. He lives in somewhat of a smaller area. And uh, I watched the uh, <laughs> I watched y'all's video that you shot that you the podcast you did with him. Yeah, uh, like a few days ago, and I was like, I was like, man, he called me Ben Polari. Oh, Ben Polari, not Ryan. But yeah, yeah. I'm like, who's Ben Polari? <laughs> I was like, Jeff, bro. We've been we've been, we've been to three boat shows together. You call me Ben Polari? Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. No. no, we met middle of summer, and you definitely were just doing house stuff. It was, it was nothing like it is now. Like, yeah. We started, I mean, and we started making like, it was, it started to become real in 2022 when like we really started like getting real income. But I mean, like this, just the last eight, nine months was the turning point of like, okay, this isn't just, you know, mom and pop shop anymore. This is like, we're making this a real business. And yep. There's two, and there's really like, there's, there's a hand, I can count on my hand, a handful of people that really uh made me look at this business in a different light you know took it from you're a you know you're a videographer to more of a you're a business owner you know this is your responsibility you know you, you can't just you can't rely off of oh maybe we'll make this much next month you know yeah and then obviously i i i went out to florida met up with jeff and the whole team out there and i started you know me and the cfo of that company his name's Justin. We connected like very, you know, we had a we had a very good relationship uh, right after the second boat show. The first two boat sh- or the the first two boat shows were kind of eh. Our one of the one, a key thing I remember him saying to me was in the Miami boat show, and he goes, "Brian, when's the time to grow up?" And I was like, "Ouch, <laughs> damn!" I was like, "That really hurt." Yeah. Um. And and it, you know it wasn't him trying to be mean but he was just like you know what is the next you know what are you doing next from here i mean you're 20 you got this business he he picked me up in the orlando airport and we drove to miami together and this whole trip from orlando to miami you know we just talked he just asked me these questions you know uncomfortable questions as i like to say yeah uh uh and he just asked me these uncomfortable questions and he was and you know he was impressed with what we were doing so far but he was like you know you're missing all this stuff like you've only just open the first couple pages of the book and you like, you know, this is a, and this is a yeah endless story here. Yeah. Like you need, like, this is what you can do to increase that. So we, we connected and, and it was great just to see how they have set up this, you know, 30 plus person company with, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars coming in monthly. Yeah. And it's like, I could just implement this on a smaller scale yeah. back where I live. Right. That's exactly what I did. And, you know, talking with you and talking with, uh, with them from not from surroundings group and then talking with a few other mentors, I finally landed. I, we're up to three retainer clients now. Right. And, you know, it's only been six months. Right. And, you know, obviously we have a, a, a shitload of work that comes in on a regular basis. So yeah. it's like, how do you manage, you know, we're trying to, I'm still trying to do sales, but still trying to manage the day to day at the same time. So yeah. I haven't put as much effort into, into growing the retainer clients as I, wanted to but right. you know just three alone is better than what it will you know having that predictability mm-hmm. in the next six months is huge for us what i've run into with retainers is you quickly realize what the actual value of that retainer should be and when you're getting your first one or two like you're putting it out of price you're like oh my gosh this is sick i don't have to worry about anything but after a few months like i would i don't know your life but i'd say you're probably overworking for the value you're putting in and i can confidently say i am too it's a hard thing to do right away but you got to make that mistake to learn too, though, you know? So it's just kind of, it's a, it's a problem you always run into, you know? It's like those ads that you see that are like, you know, how to scale. If you're, are you a videographer doing 5,000 a month freelance and you want to grow to 20 K yeah. and it's like, if you don't grow, if you don't get your first, you know, yeah. six figure client in three months, you don't. And it's like, it's like, man, sometimes you just got to get out there and just like work for cheap sometimes to, yeah. for your you know, you gotta, you gotta do the, you know, it's like you, nothing in work, nothing, no, nothing that's worth having comes easy. So yeah. sometimes you gotta put, sometimes you gotta put your head down and grind and, you know, yeah. make a little bit less than you're worth before you actually make what you're worth. Yeah. And this last client we just signed the, the one we signed it like literally a week and a half ago now. Yeah. Uh, that's probably the first client that like we signed on retainer that was like 
you know, this is actually worth what we're getting paid. Yeah. And I was like, okay, you know, this isn't bad. And, yeah. and you know, the other two are, are, are terms. One is like, and one contract that is ending this month, but we've already agreed to sign again. And I'm going to approach them about, you know, maybe we, you know, we got to kind of up the game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. The price a little bit. Yeah. 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 No, that's how it goes. I saw a fun little meme looking thing. It's like, hey, I doubled my rates, which I don't suggest, but I doubled my rates, but dang it, I lost half my clients. And then the response is like, good. You have double the money and you have half the work, you know? So it's like, sometimes you run into that, but that doesn't seem ethical sometimes, but it's, it's realistic. No. Yeah. And like that was, and there's, and there's like, I mean, and you know the difference between a high quality client and like a low quality client. Yeah. And there's a big difference. Yeah. If you've, if you've dealt with lower quality clients, you know, yeah, it's, it's kind of a struggle the whole way through, whether it's the revisions that you have to do, or it's just communication or it's, you know, we want to, we want, you know, a $5,000 shoot for $500 type of thing. Yeah. Or, you know, a five or a $500 shoot for, you know, a hundred dollars type of thing. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's tricky because, you know, it's hard to, it's, it's been hard. It's hard to raise prices and, mm-hmm. you know, cause you, it's the, it's the, it's the fear of like losing clientele. But I mean, yeah. if you're losing that clientele, you know, at what expense? Right? right. And that meme describes it perfectly. Yeah. 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 Um, I've always wondered, how did you get connected with, it was probably surroundings group first or was it nautical network first? I know they're the same thing, like the same umbrella, but yeah, how'd you connect there? It was nautical. Yeah. So it was with Jeff. It was mm-hmm. actually with Jeff, which is why I ended up reaching out to you because I was like, oh man, like, like I just got to see what this kid's doing. Yeah. And I, and, and it all worked out perfectly when we met in Ames that, yeah. you know, however many months ago, but yeah. Um, I don't know how I started following Jeff. I think I saw one of his reels. And it was a party video, and I was like, this is just incredible editing. Yeah. Like, I was blown away by his editing skills. Yeah. And I, I started following him. And then I remember one day, I mean, this was this was 2022, back in, like, August, August 2022. And I was like, and they, he posted, hey, uh, you know, Nautical Network hiring. And I was like, like, even if I just get to be an editor, like, this is this would be awesome. You get to edit these, like, luxury yachts, do these reels. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I just shot, I just sent it out and I was like, hey, you know, I'd love to like apply. And I remember they told me out of like 50 people that applied, I was like one of like four or five that got an interview. And I was like, holy crap. Maybe it was more, maybe it was less. Maybe they were just gassing me up. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but when I mean, I, I've, I've gone to a few boat shows now, so I know that they liked me a little bit. Right. But um, the goal was to come on as an editor and, and do work for them like that. And I remember, you know, we signed all the paperwork in July didn't hear anything until didn't hear anything for months. I was like, all right, I'm sure they'll just hit me up whenever they're ready. And then in October, I get a phone call, you know, Hey, would you like to come to Fort Lauderdale for the boat show? We'll fly you out. Yeah. And I was like, and that was like pinnacle. I, I've never been flown anywhere for any sort of work. Yeah. And that just opened up a whole new gate. You know, now we've traveled to like 14 different States and like mm-hmm. countless cities and you know, mm-hmm. it's been, it's been a really wild. So that really opened up a, a lot of doors, but it was yeah. originally all through Jeff. Yeah. So what's your relationship with them? Obviously you've gone to the boat shows, but it's more than that. It's uh so my relationship with surroundings group is like an as needed, uh, produce like product or creator really. Yeah. So if they are, if there's ever a time and this is just one instance that, okay, you know, we have all our creators are like, you know, booked up with their own personal shoots or they are out in the field doing stuff for us. You know, can you come down here for the week and just like, help with overflow shoots. And it's like, yeah, I can do that. Yeah. And, you know, I know that we have the infrastructure here already in place that there's enough to, you know, manage the work here because obviously like, you know, me picking up and leaving can be maybe, maybe I don't think it's really not annoying to, to the guys here because we work so remote anyways. Yeah. That it's just like, okay, you know, I'm just, you know, the same work is still happening. Everything's getting done. It's just, I'm in a different state doing other work and, and that's kind of that's been the relationship so far. They sent some edits over to me a few few days ago, and and I knocked those out for them. But it's kind of just as needed, you know. If I was if I was there in Florida, I'm sure it would be different. You know, I would probably already be full time with them. But when they offered me a job there, I just it didn't seem like it was the right decision to just drop everything I had going. Yeah. 
and, and move over to a different state just to, you know, you know, number one, work for less. But number two, it was like, man, I got my own thing. I got my own name on this. You know, this is, I've been building this brand for, for mm-hmm. years now. And, and it's just now starting to become something, you know, I don't want to give up on it. Yeah. It's just, the goal is to never have a ceiling. And it's like, oh, if you do that role, you know, you get to record great stuff. You have great connections. Like that ceiling honestly could be higher, but you don't really know. It seems as if that ceiling probably is going to be lower. And so that's what I'm always messing with. My my friend who has an agency in Colorado, he was kind of debating, you know, Alex Hormozzi? Yes. The, you know, guru guy Fitness or whatever. Dude. Yeah, fit, guy, big yeah. biceps, got uh, no strips on, whatever. Well, yeah. his his <laughs> wife <laughs> always. Yeah. His wife needed a videographer and he's like, ooh, these could be really good connections, but I'd have to drop everything. And uh, I, it's just like, those are risky ones. If If we can... If we could run a business and do it and live off of it, that's more than most people can do. So it's like hard to drop, you know. And it's like, it's funny because you say, you know, you just mentioned be careful what you say no to. It's like, it's also be careful what you say yes to. Yeah. You know, it's all, you know, it goes, it goes both ways. You never want to, yeah. you never want to box yourself into the point where, you know, you, you can't grow anymore. Not saying you couldn't grow out of that. You know, if I didn't have any sort of direction, or if I could, if I could start it over again, or if I had to start over again, and I didn't know where to go, I would go work for an agency. I would yeah. say, "Hey, you know, I'm I'm here. I would love, you know, I'll work for whatever and grow my skills. I would learn from them, and then if I had the same mindset, I would take that knowledge after like two years and go do my own thing." <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just how much are we suffering sometimes to learn things that we could have learned working for nothing at an agency, you know? Yeah. It would it can it can be nice, but I'm too deep into it now to try that. So <laughs> And it's like it's like, man, it, it, you feel that way, you know, I could have learned all this stuff, you know, if yeah. I did if I did something else, but it's also, you know, I I love that I've had to struggle through all of this. Yeah. And it's not like one day not one day goes by where it's I have a regret that that I didn't do you know I didn't start the business how I started it and grow it how I start or grow it how I grew it and all this stuff and I don't know I'm, I'm thankful that I have all the people around me to help me with that but I'm also like I also don't know if I would ever think that I would want to go back and do it again from a different from a different you know no. perspective or starting point yeah I talk about if I have different lives and what I do but I'm in this one, and I've made this pathway. I'm sticking with it, man. I, I'm doing all this. Turn back now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah late, no kidding. Too late to go back now. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Beer. Ugh. Uh, and what you drinking there? This is uh, Aldi, Aldi Lacroix. Basically, I'm, sp- I'm a sparkling water guy. I feel cool when I drink it. You know, just I like it. I like some sparkling water. Nothing yeah, wrong yeah. with that, dude. Real talk. I've been trying the, you know, how you like unintentionally fast in the morning and you just rip coffee. I've been doing that since we've talked. It's, it's, you know, it's so good. So, it's so funny that you mentioned that because I have become huge on what I've been eating lately in yeah. terms of like just macros. Yeah. Really just protein and carbohydrates. Yeah. It, like I've been, I've been, I, I've been for a while I was so focused on like don't eat until dinner time, you know, skip breakfast, skip lunch, skip breakfast is easy. You know, midway through the day, one, you know, 12, one o'clock, you start to feel it a little bit. Yeah. And then, you know, going all the way, you know, you're going to be super hungry. Yeah. But I've like, I've, I'll have i skip be- breakfast every day and I'll drink coffee. Uh, maybe I don't drink as much coffee as I used to, but I still drink a shitload of coffee. Right. And then I will have a small meal like halfway through the day. I don't know. It's just pretty much strictly protein. If I, if I eat like a full meal, like you know, rice and chicken, just hypothetically speaking here, or I go out and I get like, you know, some slim chickens. I don't know. Do y'all, do y'all have slim chickens in it? No, ants? we don't. What is that? What's like your chicken place to go to? And I don't, I don't and, get chicken if I go somewhere. I just go to Chipotle and man, that's my spot. It'd be like going, it's like going to Chipotle and you know, you, when you get, when you get a bunch of rice or you get, you know, a bunch of carbohydrates and you eat it and you're just so, and I always feel so tired after I eat like yeah, frick. something like, <laughs> like some protein and some, a bunch of fries and like the yep. fries will like, they drain me. So yep. what I started doing is like going to these like chicken places, you know, fried chicken's huge here. Yeah. Okay. Canes, you got right. some chickens, Zaxby's, all these places. Right. And, uh, uh, I'll go there and I'll just be like, I'm just gonna get four tenders. It's going to be like 
45, 50 grams of protein, yeah. like lower on the carbohydrates because I'm not getting the fries and I'm not e- eating the bread. And uh, I'll just eat that and, you know, get some, get, my, get some protein in, you know, and it's kind of as like as needed. I'm not going to say mm-hmm. that, you know, going to get fried chicken is the best like no. lunch no. option ever. <laughs> but like, you know, if I'm out and we're working and it's like, OK, I'm either going to McDonald's or I'm going to freaking go get some fried chicken and only eat the chicken. Then I'm going to go get fried chicken and only eat the chicken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, it works. It, it works. Does. Carbohydrates make you tired. It does. Every since I talk, I I tried it out. I would I would wake up earlier, drink coffee, see how long it could last. But it's kind of landed on definitely wake up earlier, definitely drink the coffee, maybe a protein bar because that doesn't really drain me or anything. And then I work until about one or two p.m. straight, just straight mm-hmm. through. Um, and then I'll hit a workout, and then I'll drown myself in some food, and then I'll be tired, and then I shower, and then the shower wakes me up. And then work number two, and then I try to fit another meal in that day. But it's yeah. tough building a business and trying to build your body out at the same time. It no, is so hard. It's so gnarly. I understand? It's like yeah. it's like man, I because whenever because I'll put my gym clothes on and I'll sit there still working on the computer, and I'm like, I got, I got to really go to the gym today, and yeah. I get caught up doing everything else, and I and I will miss going to the gym. So it's like, man, do I just like rip out push ups in between? Yeah. Or do I just yeah, you know, muster up and go to the gym? And if it's like some days I, I try to do three day split because I just know there's no way I'm making it to the gym every day of mm-hmm. the week. Mm-hmm. You know. So I'll usually do like Monday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or like Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Just yeah. so I can know that I'm getting in there and doing something. Yeah. And I've been doing the afternoon lifts because if I do it in the morning, I'm so anxious about getting back and getting the projects you need done. I'm not even thinking about the lift. I cut off my lift. But when I do it in the afternoon, it's like I'm already semi burnt out for the day let me get a workout in and then i'll be fired up to work again and i don't want to think about it once i lift after i do my work you know so it's all yeah. weird balance all weird i think balance. the i definitely like working out in the afternoon better yeah i don't know what it is maybe it's, I, I just know that those first few hours of the morning especially like i try to wake up lately when i, I was in texas visiting my girlfriend and uh you know you know, wake up at like seven, eight o'clock, you know, I would still work late, but, uh, you know, when I'm here at home by myself, it's like, okay, wake up. I'm, I'm out of bed by like six thirty, Yeah. And I'm on the computer working and I just feel like those first like two hours of the day, I'm so like, you know, focused on what's going on, you know, going to the gym would interrupt my whole entire flow. Yep. Yep. And, and, you know, I, I think it's funny because there's so many different information, there's so much information out there about like, you know, there's, there's a right way to do it. There's not a right way to do it. It's like, man, just do whatever works for you. Yeah. You know, no and, one can sit here and tell me like that. The, yeah. Not, not one person my age, and uh, this is a praise to you, man. Not one person my age has built up a business and able to put out as many shoots in a day like Polari Productions, man. So whatever you're doing, you're doing it all right job. Stress, so stressful. Oh, I know. I can't. I can't imagine, man. I only have a few shoots a week because a lot of my stuff's remote work. I can't imagine doing like. I mean, you rip out multiple a day sometimes with those home like, ones. Dude, we we like. I think like last week or the week before, we ripped like seven a day, seven shoots in one day. Oh my god! And that's gosh. like, and that's like two people working. Uh, you know, I was. I try to avoid being in the field if I don't have to be in the field because yeah. I know that my efforts are better spent you know, doing the back work, the back end work. Yeah. And, you know, letting the guys focus on the production side so I yep. can really work on growing the business. Yeah. And, you know, I, I have such a hard time saying no to people. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, like, yeah. You gotta, yeah. If it's people that are loyal, like, I have a, such a hard time saying, no, we can't do it. Or, like, yeah. can we make this day work? Yeah, we'll make this day work. Don't even worry yeah. about it. Make yeah. the day work at the date and, you know, yeah. shoes are set. But, like, yeah. I try to, I try to really spoil my guys. I try to, like, you know, if they're going to be out, if they're going to be out all day long, you know, buy them stuff, send them a bonus, you know. Right. I, I sent the guys, like, I got a call. I was in Texas, and I got a call from one of my buddies out in Florida uh, who works for an agency, and he goes, hey, like, I need you to, can you be in Louisiana tomorrow by, like, by, like, 2 o'clock? And I was like, yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah. They make a few phone calls, and, like, sure enough, called the guys. They're good, you know. And they're driving to Louisiana, 5 a.m., six, you know, six and a half hour drive. Right. They got back at 1 a.m., but, you know, just a huge shoot throughout the day. Yeah. And, and, you know, it was all, you know, when I look at this work that comes in, it's like, okay, you know, 
what's going to benefit us long term? You know, was it really worth it to drive to have these guys drive to Louisiana to go do this shoot? You know, was it like, yeah, you know, could could the efforts have been better spent somewhere else? Mm -hmm. You know, maybe, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, you know, like if you were to tell me, you know, okay, you know, you do you do a few shoots for this company and you impress them, you know, they're going to use you for the rest of for the rest yeah. of the time. Yeah, and it's like, who do I? Whose attention do I care about more? You know, the agency with thirty employees, or yeah, you know the you know the the, the real estate agent with like a few listings yeah. throughout the year. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know, and it comes down to like I'm you know it's big. I'm big on relationships, so you know mm -hmm. I'm going to go out of my way to impress somebody that I know is going to return the value. That's yeah. going to have a big ROI in the yeah. future. Yeah, and I think that's really important. Yeah, it's just like you know, you know, not not doing stuff because it seems scary. Yeah, yeah, and that's just the real way to say it. People say like, "Yeah, I like them because they're cool," but it's like, ah, we like the ROI that comes too, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's hard because you know, and some of my mentors talk a lot about like burning out and and like you know, man, you you might be really going a hundred miles an hour now, but you'll burn out in the future. And I'm like, dude, I I was told I was gonna burn out in high school, and here we are, you know, yeah. three years later, still going full speed, you know, yeah, I haven't burned out yet. Yeah, you know, and it maybe maybe it's not that I have burned out or you know have been in the place to burn out, but it's like I've just gotten more efficient or better at like learning how to, you know, use my you know maximize my body's a uh, potential mm -hmm. in in the twenty four hours we have throughout the day. Yeah, and a lot of that's just like you know health is huge for me now. Like yeah. health wasn't as big of a priority to me like two years ago but now health is like okay like yeah i need to make sure i got get my calories getting my sleep you know i i do a lot of things to to really help with like making sure i'm in the best mindset possible mm -hmm. yeah and i think you know when to pivot when you actually need to pivot you know when you're ripping out those shoots you're like we can't do this every day but uh i see some things that we could be making money a little more efficiently are you are you surprised how many out-of-state shoots you do yes <laughs> Absolutely. I'm like, I saw in your bio, you got like worked in 20 states. I'm like, what the heck? You're carrying around that gear, those different places. That's crazy to me. Dude, I, we got a call. We got it. We got a call November, the end of November. No, it was the first week of December. And one of my contacts called me. He's like, hey, bro, I need you to go to, I need you to go to like five different plants in the next two weeks and we need all the content delivered by the 21st and keep in mind it's like the third of december yeah. and i'm like we have to go to we have to go to south dakota chicago uh two places in texas huh. you know st louis and and there was one other spot and i was like there's just like you you need this done when yeah it's done in 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 three weeks i was yeah. like you're crazy but uh um, it's, it's, those are that company that, that asked us to do that is, you know, hands down, uh, our biggest client. So mm -hmm. it's like, you know, they're, they're a billion dollar company. Mm -hmm. If you think that I'm not, I'm going to say no to somebody that has, you know, the potential to change the course of our business without, yeah. with, you know, with the blink of an eye, yeah. I'm not going to say no to that. And, and, you know, plus the fact that they were, were 50% of the revenue in December. Yep. Yeah. Also, also helped a lot with that, but um, right. But you have them I'm on definitely surprised. You have them on retainer too, right? Are we talking about the the shed storage shed looking metal, plant? Metal, the metal, metal thing. manufacturer. Okay, yeah. cool. We we don't have them on retainer. I've I've talked to them a little bit about it. They aren't huge on the idea, but they have set budget for us. Right. Really. So they have a so they I, and I actually know the budget, which is a, which helps a lot. But um, the our marketing. Uh, contact was like uh, this is this is how much we want to spend with you or we have allocated for you next year and I was like cool well, yeah yeah I don't I don't even think my retainer would have been this high no no no, no. I mean you, yeah. like you said when you do do the projects which is often enough especially now that you know you're in their budget I mean you're fine yeah. you're worth it yeah Dang. yeah now I wish I had them on retainer that would be nice if I had them on retainer I would be like okay we are only doing retainers going forward yeah I would I would I would really I would really you'd have to really be a a big fish for me to consider doing one off work right. unless it was like a partnership or something but yeah if, I, if we had them on retainer then it would be it would be a game changer for sure yeah do you only travel for work like I do <laughs> it's just like I feel like I if it if I can't travel and still have my trajectory going up, I don't want to go anywhere. I'm going to be right here and, and 
Arkansas or in my case, Iowa. <laughs> yeah. No, I definitely like one of the excuses we've had to travel as well is like, is, you know, using stock footage as an investment for us mm -hmm. and like, okay, you know, let's take a, let's take a, like a boy's trip to New York, Yeah. but then shoot stock footage so that we can then sell it and then make money yeah. from that stock footage. And, you know, it might take two years, but the trip is going to pay itself off. Or it might take a year, but the trip is going to pay itself off. Yeah. Um, I, I think that I always wanted to travel in mm -hmm. this industry. And it was like, man, I, I don't know if I, you know, for the longest time it was how do we travel? You know, how do we get out of the state? Yeah. And and then now that I like feel like I go somewhere, you know, I'm out of state for like a week out of the month, every single month. It's like, holy crap, I don't want to travel anymore. I just want to be home. Yeah. I just want to I just want to work on the business and not feel like I have right. to go somewhere in like four days. No, I love bumming out and sitting in a hoodie and sitting on my computer and doing my computer not bumming out mentally, but Physically, I just love being yeah. like, all right, let's let's get some work. Yeah, when you get a when you get a chillax, you know, you're in your space, you got yeah. your stuff. Yeah. My space is huge to me. I, I can work anywhere, but like, but like when I'm in my space, I know that I'm at my like I'm a hundred percent like yeah. It's like focus is there, mm -hmm. and that's because I know like I've curated the space to be something that is you know per there's no like there's no distractions. Yeah, you know. TV is not we're, not, we're not playing, very rarely will I play TV while I'm, like, on the computer. Like, yeah. I, it's going to have to be late night, you know, I just want something on in the background to, like, have a little bit of, you know, noise coming in. Yeah. But, you know, most of the time it's, like, no music in the morning, you know, coffee, mm. you know, I don't have hardly any social media on my phone. Right. So... It's 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 like a distraction free zone, and it can be so boring sometimes. But like once you get invested in like yeah what you're doing, it's like okay, I mean you don't even realize it anymore. Yeah, and you'll have those few days where you're not invested, and it really sucks. You're like, oh, it feels like I got nothing else if I'm not working on this. But every other day, man, we're we're as happy to be here as anyone in the world, man. Yeah, I was who said it? I forgot who said it, but it was like. uh Dude, what did they? It was it was it was a great quote I heard off of a podcast. Um, it was it had to do with exactly what you just said. What did you just say, bro? How did I forget so, this? We're oh. as happy to be here as anyone. That's kind of what I said. Like we're so we're so invested and connected to what we're doing. It's kind of what I'm getting at. I don't know how that related. To, I what did said you say before that. Um, you'll be burnt <laughs> out. You'll be burnt out, and your day will suck some days. Yeah. But when you're when you're locked in, like it's the best feeling ever. Is kind of what I was saying. I'm drawing a blank, bro. I can't remember what I was gonna. Say. That's all fine. We get the point, man. <laughs> they know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love what you do, and you'll be all right. Yeah, I love what you do, guys. Just kidding. <sighs> I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> what's your answer? What's your answer? Mine's a BS answer. I'll tell you after yours. But what do you say if someone wants you to get into what you do and do what you do? I'm not. Yeah, no, mine is. No, no, I I kind of agree, man. I'm like, if you want to do this, like my actual answer is, you got to be a little bit of a psychopath about it, like yeah, straight up, man. It's like I, man, if 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 making art is your passion, if you wanna if you wanna wake up and like pick up the camera and be like, I'm making a passion project today, you know, don't try to work with this stuff because like you're gonna be quick, you're gonna quickly realize that like the work that people need and what you want to make. Are often not the same thing, but yeah. if, I mean, if you can find that 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 unicorn, don't. dude, like, don't like, don't let it slip away. Yeah, but man, I, I get a lot of I get a lot of kids that that like will reach out to me that that really want to be in this industry, and it's like, man, like, I don't know, because it comes down to what do you want more? Like, do you want to build a brand or do you want to shoot videos mm -hmm. that look cool? And like, if it's shoot videos that look cool, I wouldn't. I don't know if I would recommend like. This I would I don't know if I'd recommend like going into business. I would recommend like shooting shooting stuff for fun on your free time and posting it on Instagram. Yeah. Like I don't know if I would recommend like like going into this as a career completely. Yeah. Yeah. My I don't, I don't know because like I I really I don't I don't regret it. Yeah. But yeah. I don't but, know. Like I don't have the same mindset as like a videographer does. Like there's two levels. Well, there's the freelance, and then there's like the guy that wants to also build the company, and I want to build the company, and that's yeah. another side of. I don't know if you can relate to this, but we both picked up a camera for the first time, and I don't think either of our goals were to be 
really good at video. I think our goals were to like, hey, we can scale this thing up. Like we were thinking really small term, like we can get better video and we can make things for people. But like when at the end of the day, I always knew I want to make a business out of this. Some people are just like, I really want to make a dope video. Do you feel the same way? I didn't, I didn't want, I just, I knew that I wasn't meant to, I, I always wanted to be like a millionaire or some like, yeah, know, I got the, I got the Ferrari and the yeah. nice, house. you know, I, my goals might be a little bit different now, but like I had seen so much of like what this, like what this like crazy affluent lifestyle had to offer just from like opportunities, like working in this industry that I was like, you know, I want to, you know, what is better about some of these people than, than me, you know? And I don't want to, I don't want it to, I don't want to seem selfish, but it's, I don't, I, I always knew that like I was meant for something great. And I just, I knew that like the camera could potentially be a way to get there. Yeah. Right. That's what I, that's what I'm saying, bro. I, I am shocked when people say I have a camera and I just like taking dope photos. I don't, I don't want to do anything with it. I'm like, there's so much power there, bro. Like, look, look what we built. I mean, I, I think it comes, I mean, a lot of it, it comes down to, you know, our, what's your personality type, you know, yeah. is, is building a business what you really want to do. Yeah. And, you know, I, I don't know if like, I mean, a lot of people don't have that same mindset. You got to be a little bit crazy. You got to be a little bit arrogant. You got to be a little bit, you know, you kind of got to, you kind of got to be, you got to you got to be that guy that's willing to work harder than anybody else. Yeah. And, you know, do that consistently. It's not always about like, you know exuding the most effort in one day it's like what can you do across two three years yeah of just like consistent work on something you know a lot of people can't a lot of people can't do that yeah i scrolled back on your profile a few months back and like obviously i saw you like we're into like creative photo and video how long were you in that state of like there was a while where i only looked at myself as a creative yeah right. how long were you a creative dude from i would say like i started i started working in real estate I started shooting real estate when I was 14 years old. Okay. And, and from there I was in this, like, I didn't know what I wanted to like. I didn't know what this could become. I didn't have this idea of a company. I knew that like, I wanted to be, you know, have, you know, have a nice car and, you know, hot girlfriend, you know, big house, whatever, yeah. you know, like in high school, it was like, man, like I'm going to go smoke weed and hang out with my friends. Yeah. And it was like, you know, I didn't really know. I, I kind of, I didn't have a vision. If I, if I had, you know, a business plan, you know, back then, yeah, God, you know, who knows what this would be now, but I didn't really develop that, like the really, the plan, you know, until just, you know, a year ago. Mm -hmm. And so I was in this, I was in this, like, you know, I'm just a creative, you know, I'm just a videographer, you know, I'm just a photographer for a long time, mm -hmm. you know, years. And, you know, since I was a young kid messed around with the camera and you know i i really you know a lot of it was i like making videos i really like putting stuff together i like the process i like you know the technical behind it i like the creative side i like that you can mix technical with like creativity you know a fl you know an ocean with like structure mm -hmm. and and put something together and that really intrigued me but you know then like getting older i was like okay well i mean Am I just gonna do freelance forever? Or... Yeah. No thanks. No thank you. No. <laughs> and and it was like I knew I knew that I I was meant to to do something more. You know I I don't even know if this is I, my destiny. I I think that a lot of times I think about you know what is my purpose supposed to be long term. You know, uh, you know I really like I really enjoy being being someone that can give my friends an opportunity to work mm -hmm. or, you know, being the guy that they can come to and saying, Hey man, I need work. Well, <laughs> hey, light just flickered. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> it turned orange, I think, or something. I have no yeah, idea. Okay. But, uh, yeah, but business. Like being, a, <laughs> being the guy that could like, you know, be that, be the gate to this, to this, to like working for, working about working with something that you like to do. And a lot of that was like building out a production team. Mm -hmm. I have friends who really want to be in this industry. You know, what can I do to like help them be in this industry that is like benefiting me and also benefiting them? Cause it's like, it's hard for me to hang around people that don't have the same vision or the same goals or the same, like, yeah. like if, if I'm going to hang out with somebody and it's like, yeah, let's go to a party. I'm like, like I could be working right now, dude. Like yeah. I don't really, 
I'm not saying, and I'm not saying like don't go out and have fun, but it's like, it's on occasion, dude. It's, it's really on yeah. like occasion that I'm like, all right, I'm going to set aside work for the night. Yeah. And even then it's like, I, I will work on my phone while I'm there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, even yeah. if I'm celebrating, it's got to be something cool. A birthday isn't really even an excuse anymore. I'm going out for my birthday. Well, not as hard, but, but I definitely am. But like, I want to like maybe go out if I did something cool. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I just always, like, in my mind, I just always think, like, there's somebody out there who doesn't care to, like, let this be an excuse. So why do I care to let it be an excuse as well? Yeah. yeah. A lot of it was I really, I I party like, I was going to parties every weekend in high school. Like, senior, like, junior, senior year was, like, my party year. I'd have my camera, you know, hey, mom, got to go to a shoot, come back 2 a.m. in the morning. It was a party. Just We were just filming it. But like, you know, I, you know, I was in that, like, I'm almost thankful that like, I got that stuff done with or yeah. like, I, I hear a house party now and I'm just kind of like, yeah, you know, yeah, don't, don't know if I care to go to one again after everything that I've like gone to and seen and, and it's just, it just doesn't, it doesn't pique my interest as much anymore. And I'm glad that like. I, I, tr- I'm glad that I experienced so much at such a young age last year, bro. It was that be careful who you put your trust in or be careful who you like let into your life, but, th- and also be careful who you tell things to, mm-hmm. because, you know, it's not always in their best interest to keep that information for themselves. Or, you know, you might not, you know, you might trust them more than they actually trust you. Yeah. That was the biggest thing for me this year. Yeah. My my trust is very limited. Like when I tell someone something, I expect that they're gonna tell the world because I just hate stuff like that. But you gotta have people where you can expect not that to happen. But I haven't gotten there yet, <laughs> so I, I definitely tough. have my inner circle for sure. Yeah, I like my close, like the knit, like the the group of f- five people, the people, the group of people on one hand that I could tell stuff to, or like, yeah, I would know would never flip if yeah. it meant like life or death. Yeah, and it's like if you break that trust, like. Like I, I, you can't be in that group anymore. Mm. But these are people that like I've been with for years. You know that I right. know will yeah. ever turn that are right. my ride or die till the day I'm gone. Yeah, type of people and, and you know the people I could rely on to pick me up two a.m. if it was like four hours away. Hey, bro, got into some trouble. Need right, some help. you might come to pick me up. Right, like it'd be like yeah, all my way. No, like no question. Yeah, and I think that. I think that like if you haven't found those five people, you got to find those five people. Yeah. Even maybe it's less, maybe it's more, but like that group of people that like you know that are there for you. Yeah. No matter what. Yeah. Uh, Gary V always said the point zero one percent thing. I don't know if you ever heard that. Nah. Uh, ninety nine point nine nine percent of people on this earth don't give a crap about you. They don't. They don't care what's gonna happen to you. You might say something and they might react, but the day after they're not going to. But it's that point zero one, or you kind of say that one hand worth of people that are gonna give a crap and talk through with you. So I've always lived yeah. for that since I was fourteen. So a little started out with Gary V. You know the deal. No, I agree. Gary, I mean Gary V. Is just inspirational as a whole. Just like his whole mentality. This was his custom <laughs> shoe. Did you know that? No, I didn't know he had one. He put out a shoe that says optimism and positivity on it, and it's kind of sick. I bought those when I was, like, 14 when I was really into him, but... Yeah. I uh, I think something that inspirationally said was, like, about realtors, and I've started to implement this with the two realtors that I have on retainer, was, like, you need to be the newspaper of your, of your area. Yeah. Like, you know, you need to be you know, telling people about this area, you know, mm-hmm. I, I can't, how many people do you see hop on Instagram and talk about, you know, hire me as a realtor. Too All many. Realtors that don't know what they're doing. Right? Yeah. Or, yeah. You know, the ones that make their interest rate videos, mm-hmm. you know, interest rate is this in 2019 interest rate is this in 20, you know? Yeah. It's like, great. I've seen that one. Thanks man. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. 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 I told you about that too. My top videos is the realtors making community updates. Um, we did one about a park that's going in downtown. It got 6,000 views. And I'm like, cool. Now you know. Cool stuff. And you're doing that too. Yeah. A lot of stuff, like with our, our series, Local Gems, uh, with Shannon and Lily, they uh, they do, they'll, we'll go just check out different spots. And we're, this, this next six months that we're going to do is going to be a little bit more structured than the first six months. You know, that was really just kind of like testing the waters. Yeah. Figuring out. And we had a couple of videos do like pretty well. And I was like, okay, you know, these are like, this is what people wants to see. 
And, you know, knowing more now about, like, the short-form content, like, with hooking people in, you know, yeah. this doesn't need to be some long, drawn-out, you know, uh, script-infested video. You know, it could be really simple in essence. Yeah. Um, totally depends on their personality, if they can go without a script or not. Some people can't do it. Some people need to have a have their stuff written out. Yeah. You definitely go scriptless. <laughs> Dude, I don't, I don't think... I, even in high school, when it was like prevent, pre- present in front of the class, it was like, okay, key points. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. I'm going scriptless. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I'll make shit up on the spot. I can't, I can't do a script. If you expect me to like yeah. read a script, you're crazy. I'll just start going, I'll just start going off and just not like. Yeah. I'll get off topic. I'll ramble, bro. I can ramble forever. Yeah. I've grown. I've grown. I definitely was a stutter bucket at first, but I can talk now. Why not? Yeah. That's all right. But fine, you can talk. Yeah, I mean we got you now. Ugh. That's half the brand. Oh yeah. No, you, you didn't did, what did you say? Did you wanna be the did you wanna be the face? Did, were you like I wanna be like the face of something or were you always kinda like I'm cool just like, you know, didn't really care to ever be like the front image of a brand? No, I I could be the front image. I think I think I'm likable enough that that's fine and I can do good stuff. And a lot of my content is personal content now. I didn't know if you knew, but when I was like 15, I did a series called How to Make Your Computer Slash Laptop Look Dope. So I'd review like accessories and like programs and stuff like that. Thing got millions of views and I was just loving it. Uh, I built up a discord of a thousand members that were just all like, Yo, I want to talk to Isaac. I, I, I love stuff like that. Obviously, I did. You were like the fact that you had that at fifteen is just number one ridiculous. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. If only you would have known how to like monetize that yep. at a young age, you would have been like set. That you you just said it. I didn't know how to, and I didn't. I knew how to convert it to a Discord, and then I just did, dropped off the planet of the Earth. You know, I built up a following of five thousand followers just making Iowa TikToks. It was great. Got recognized at Walmart a few times. I was loving it yeah. um, at Walmart. <laughs> I've, I've always loved this follow. Yeah, it's hard to like. Yeah, you know when you when you when getting recognized is the best feeling. Yeah, yeah. Five K followers at you know fourteen years old felt pretty cool. And then the computer videos came out. I got to sixty thousand, and I'm like, yep, I love this. Um, but yeah. yeah, it's crazy stuff. But I love that, dude. That, I've never. That's crazy. Yeah, let's scroll back to my old TikTok. I finally put them out again. You know, obviously my my boy to girl following ratio was like 80-20 boys just because of all the tech content or whatever I noticed. You're, now, that you're, now that you're an older man, you wish it was the other way around. You're like, bro, like I loved when I made those Iowa TikToks. I got like DM'd by like four girls. I'm like, yo, I'm so cool. But I don't care about any of that crap now. It's just, I don't mind being the front of the face and, and I love being able to leverage a personal brand and you're building up yours. You'll love leveraging it too. It's it's good stuff. I never wanted to be the face of Ployer Productions. Well, yeah. Hopefully you'll differentiate a little bit. Yeah. yeah. But we'll see. That's awesome. I would check out your TikTok, but I deleted it. Oh, I have my apps deleted every day. I install them at the beginning of the day to post my stuff and then... I uninstall them all and go throughout the day. It's funny you say that because, like, I run into more people. Like, the people that... I feel like the people that work in, like, social marketing and, like, personal, like, Instagram and, and, you know, stuff like that, like, hate the platforms Mm -hmm. as much as they, like, utilize them. Mm -hmm. Because if I didn't have to utilize Instagram or Facebook or, Mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I know that we post on TikTok because Katarina tells me we post on TikTok. I've never seen our TikTok. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I hate I hate the apps. I hate social yeah. media as a whole. And if I if we didn't utilize it, I wouldn't have it at all. Yeah. Well, it's already getting to the point where even some people using it personally is at a bad spot. So then trying to use it professionally, you know, using it personally, using it professionally, looking at analytics and stuff like that, it just gets even worse for your mental. So. You got to be careful with it. And I think that's why a lot of people like you and I'm sure a lot of other managers like me, we're, we're taking it off our phones during the day unless we're, you know, engaging or whatever or posting. But yeah. it's just hard. It is. To like, uh, to like know how they use the app against you to keep your attention and then like sit there and like 
like watch it happen in real time. Yeah. And like hate. Yeah. It's off of me. And I I I'm excited for a change. Um, I saw I saw a notable creator that I like. He posted a thing. He's like, creators, we need to do better. We need to stop with vertical content. And then I swiped out of that post and I looked at his page and every single one of them is a reel. And that's how he scaled from zero to 140,000 followers. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Like, it's cool. It's a cool thought. But like, let's be realistic here. Like, we got a few more months, years out of this short form thing before a change comes. But. It's like saying, like, you know, the internet's too much. Let's go, like, let's get rid of the internet. It's like, yeah, that's funny. Sorry, bud. That's not going to happen. Not gonna happen. <laughs> Sorry, bud. I like the internet. I love it. No, the internet's great. The internet's wonderful. Learned a lot of, you know, learned something new on the internet every day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not something I need to learn about, but, yeah. What's next for you, man? Next, streamline this, streamline this personal content stuff. Yeah. Are you going to do it on a separate page or are you going to do it all Polari stuff? We're doing, um, I have, I have the, the URL brian.polari. So I'm going to start ideally post on that. Yeah. <laughs> I know that we talked about that. Yeah. Um, ideally start that, you know, I think that the part the brand, you know, the Polari production stuff, uh, was, took precedence over that, you know, I still want to do Brian Polari's like behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that the kid, I don't know if you saw him in the background. I don't think he walked through, but his name's Tristan. Um, he's going to help me out with a lot of the behind the scenes stuff, just as like running the business on the day to day. But the goal for like the goal right now is streamline like Polari Productions, like personal uh, content uh, to the point where it's like I have where it's like 1% of my time mm-hmm. being taken up by that. Yeah. You know, everything is everything is outsourced as far as editing, you know. I have an editor already who's killing it on that stuff. So it's yeah. just like, you know, per, refine that to the point where it's like not anything too crazy and then just like treat it like it's another client. Mm-hmm. Like treat this, treat my business like it's another business that we're working for. Yep. And not look at it any other different way because I don't want to get emotional about like. That's exactly how I do it. I have under my project, I have client name and one of my client names is Isaac Jarnigan. And I'm like, this is just as legit as the other ones. Um, I don't know, you might take something from this, but you use Notion, or sorry, you use Monday, I use Notion, but every Monday I have personal reels, and I'm going to make like a list and put five of those on Monday and record five of them or whatever, and then you'll send them off. I'll be editing them myself for a while until I grow a little bit bigger, but uh, <laughs> it'll be a grind. I know that, that I'm glad you're starting that. I think it doesn't hurt to have that, and you have more resources than the average lad does, so it definitely doesn't hurt to have that. So, no, and it's something that we've been neglecting. It's just the the one the, I tell you the problem that we've been running into is like coming up with ideas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like thinking of like thinking of content on a daily basis, and like I got a, I got my I got my little notebook around here somewhere that I have ideas jotted down. But yeah, uh, you know, just like doing stuff that's not so niche that it's like only for videographers, but more, you know, this is for like content creators, you know? Yeah. I'm doing no niche right now. I'll see where it takes me. I'm literally like, if I think of an idea and it sounds desirable, I'm going to roll with it and see how that goes. But uh, I have no idea. It's hard. It's hard. It's probably not the best way to go either. Like having a niche is great, but if I truly want it to be personal content, I'm going to make it personal, you know? It has to be personal content. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's how you build a pro. But anyway, I feel like you're, I feel like you're, um, your audience is like people that are in this like growth phase yeah. in their life. That's like, okay, you know, I'm 20, I'm 21, 22. Like, yeah, we're like, we're building right now. Yeah. I feel like you're in like this, your content is like building. Yeah. You know? And I think it's great. Like, I love your content. Thanks, man. Like, I honestly think that it's like, it's some of my favorite content to watch. I'm like, man, dude, you're great at this stuff. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, uh, I definitely like took inspiration to like build my own like little like recording studio. Yeah. After I saw like your little setup you had, I was like, dude, this is pretty dope. Yeah. Uh, that's why I built this freaking ridiculous vertical freaking that's, camera rig. <laughs> that's overkill, bro. I put like a, I put like a, a an A7 III and put a rig on it. And you got what is that? What is that? That's a so, black. That's a black magic. Black magic. We record all of our content six K raw. Um, 
What do you mean you're going to streamline your personal content? You're going to use that? <laughs> this is streamlined. <laughs> That's wild. We spent, I spent like $200 today on like cables and like shit to like help build it out today. Oh, it's like, all right, we're going to the store. We're going to go like, we're going to, we're going to get this, we're going to get this done. So I don't have to worry about it anymore. It's my least favorite money to spend. Yours is a little more practical than mine, but I, I bought room decor and it, like it hurt. I spent 300 bucks on it, but it's going to make my room look so good. But, but whatever. <laughs> it's out of, Wait, it's out of, fr- yeah. Look at that. Actually, you know what's funny about this is like, I uh, a real estate agent that we that we shot with. She's like, yeah, you can borrow this lamp because she has like a warehouse just full of staging stuff. Yes, like, oh, do you want, do you want it back? And she's like, yeah, yeah. Just and that was the end of that. Yeah, and now I and now it's been here for over a year. And yeah. you know, hold on, you'll see my attention to detail with this. Okay. Yeah, let's see it, man. What it? What is that? What? Oh, taking out the glare. Look at you. I had to put a piece of paper over the light bulb to get rid of that freaking nasty spread on the that. on the wall back over there. Uh, so that's an insider tip right there. You want to learn about, you know yeah. what? I, I know what my video for tomorrow is going to be about, you know, what to do about. Yeah. <laughs> you want to you wanna hear a not insider tip. My original light box in high school was a painter's light or one of those yellow lights, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. I yeah. put a pillowcase over that, and that thing burnt to a crisp. That was not a good idea. <laughs> it was bad. I saw I saw it browning as I was recording, and I'm like, yeah, let's get an actual light box. Yeah, you don't want that. But, yeah, I'll, I'll build out my room. I'll record like a DJ, and we'll see how it goes. You do the same. But yeah, I think we, you know, I don't got anything else for today. I might wrap her up, man. It's been real. Yeah. Wrap her up. How long is it? How long have we been talking? Hour thirteen. You know, I I been, I talked for about an hour. You know, but it's yeah, good old stuff, man. But I'm glad that we finally got to rip this one out. Yeah, man. You're the first person that ever told me no. You're the first person to be like, nah, let's wait on it. <laughs> I, I like. I don't. I didn't. I don't think I was ready yet, bro. I don't think I was ready to do it. I don't think I had that quite that. No, I, 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 no, no dirt or anything. But uh, my. My brother kind of dis- immediately says dirt. No, no, no. This is actually this is moving on. I'm, I literally mean no dirt. My brother said kind of described my podcast in a different way where I'm like, hey, this is actually kind of cool. He's like, Isaac's interviewing like the future millionaires in their growth phases early on. I'm like, yeah, I guess I do kind of do that. huh? So, yeah, I think that you don't have it. You don't have anything to talk about is exactly what I talk to, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. It's cool stuff. Made me, it made me feel cool. It made me feel like a million bucks, you know? I mean, a millionaire. you should feel like a million bucks. I mean, look yeah. at you. Right? Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on now. He's tall and he's got the hair and he's got the glasses. I mean, yeah, yeah. ladies, what more do you need? Well, we got to chop this up a little bit. It is a, it is a, an Iowa thing. You know, I'm born and raised Iowa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did I not? I, I can't. I don't know if I told you that. Grew up in Clear Lake. Yeah. yeah. How long? Until you were like seven, right? No, like 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 13. What? Yeah. Dang. Yeah, you like ever going to come like... back? Are we going to take over? Actually, don't. I feel like we'd compete. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> no competition, bro. I don't, even, I don't even look at the competition anymore. It's just kind of like, I don't know. I had, I had a lady send me uh, this, this Instagram page. She's like, I think this is your biggest competition. I'm like, I've never heard of them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, sorry about it. Yeah, man, I won't keep you too long. I know that you got other stuff to do. No, no, we're chilling, man. But yeah, thanks for hopping on. Thanks for not yeah. telling me no again. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> we're not doing it. <laughs>